You know, there's a segment on Raw, which we're going to talk about here. Oh, yeah? And I can't even believe I'm saying this, because the last thing on this earth I need to see again is Alexa is the female fiend. But there's a segment where Alexa's backstage. She's getting ready for her main event, and she's twiddling her thumbs or whatever. And way in the background, there's a TV. And if you're paying attention in the middle of the thing, it's there's a flash, a, a Bray Wyatt gimmick on the TV. And they don't call attention to it. She's got her little doll next to her. She's just doing her thing, okay? Now, clearly, what they are doing is a long, slow build to Alexa Bliss turning heel and probably being aligned with Bray Wyatt or Uncle Howdy or whoever again, okay? That's clearly what they're doing. And uh, if you've been watching the show, this has been going on for months now. You know, they they she came back and... She looked like she didn't want to be there. And the announcers are calling attention to it. Like, she looks like she doesn't want to be here. She looks like she's not into it. Uh, she will be doing a segment, and there'll be a flash of whatever in the background. Uh, they did that angle last week where all of the women are talking about whatever, and she's just blindly staring off into space. And then they, they ask her what's going on. She's like, oh, yeah, it was great. And then they move on. And, uh, and every week there's a little something, okay? But, but. If you didn't see the TV last week, it doesn't matter. The story does not fall apart if you miss that flash over there on the television. If you weren't paying attention while Bianca was talking and you didn't see Alexa staring off into space blankly and, uh, oh, and she does her thing and you just didn't make much, it doesn't matter. The story doesn't fall apart. There are little seeds that are planted every week in this story and if you miss one of them, or you miss a different one, or you miss a show, the overall story is unaffected. That's, that's how this should be done in wrestling. If you miss one little thing on a random show in a backstage segment and the story goes all to hell, that is not a good story, as I mentioned earlier. Now, there's not much to talk about with this Raw. We'll make it quick. Then we can talk about other stuff. So it opened up with, they announced Riddle and Elias against the Usos for the tag team titles. The Usos beat up Elias backstage. He's killed. And so Riddle comes out and announces that he's got a replacement partner, which actually is better. It was Kevin Owens. So we have Kevin Owens and Riddle versus the Usos. 15-minute match. It was a good match. And in the end, they hit the 1D on Riddle and they pin him. And then there's a big brawl afterwards, and Kevin Owens shows up with a chair. He chases the Usos and Sami Zayn to the back, riddles alone in the ring, and all of a sudden, Solo Sokoa decides, I'm Umaga this week. He's got his thumb taped up. He's doing the running hip attack in the corner. He kills Matt Riddle, and then he puts a, a chair around his neck, puts him in the corner. He does the running hip attack to his neck. And they sell it like Riddle's done. They they stretch him out. They put the neck brace in. It looks like Riddle's out. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's a legitimate injury and they're writing him off. I mean, he wrestled for 16 minutes, so it doesn't look like it'd be that bad. Like when when Edge had the bad neck, it was he showed up on TV and retired. They didn't even let him do a match to write him off or anything. So I don't know what's going on, but Riddle appears to be gone for the time being. We had a long jbl invitational poker tournament and it wasn't very funny uh dexter loomis won a lot of money and as we'll get to the storyline is that miz is broke <laughs> like not he's not in poverty or anything like that but like he has no fluid cash or whatever they call it liquid liquid cash thank you so so he has no money he's trying to pawn his rolex which he is told is fake and then he just sees, like, he can't, he didn't even have money to enter a, a poker tournament. He's broke because of Dexter Loomis. Well, there's one WWE trope that hasn't gone away since the old man did. This is exactly what I was talking about with Keith Lee and Swerve. You're telling me out of the blue. This is like when they do it with Shawn Michaels. Remember when Shawn Michaels one day was broke? Big or, Show? Or when Big Show suddenly invests in his strip mall and he's got no money? These stories suck. Miz has been in this company for 15, 17 years. He's got a giant house. We, we had Miz and Mrs. And now one day, all of a sudden, 
He has no money anymore. <laughs> He's no broke. <laughs> Nothing. He's broke. <laughs> Stupid is what Not this is. Not even a roll of quarters, my God. No. So then we had uh, we had, we had two three ways, and the winners will face off next week to face Bianca. So it's going to be Bailey, Rhea, and Asuka. And before the Bailey match, you know how they do this. Becky comes out and they talk for like 15 minutes. I don't even know what the point was. It was like, you know, someday we'll wrestle again. Cool. So then we had Bailey, Rhea, and Asuka. And Bailey won in 15 minutes. And it was a pretty good match. It was a three way. So it's just like they came up with 8 million spots. Most of them looked good, there were a couple that didn't. But overall, it was fine. Oscar and Bailey at the end had a great back and forth, and then Oscar or uh, Bailey hit the rose plant and pinned her, so she's going on in this mini tournament. We had a Seth Rollins Bobby Lashley segment. Both classified as baby faces. Seth Rollins, the most annoying human on the planet, he's mocking and ridiculing Bobby Lashley for losing to Brock Lesnar. You just want Lashley to kill this guy. He goes to kill him. They send out all the geeks, and uh, and Lashley accidentally spears Pete Williams. That's Pete Williams, agent. I always thought his name was Petey Williams, but apparently his name was Pete Elrond Williams. Pete E. Elrond? Williams, I think, is his name. But on this show, he was just, he's grown up now. He's, he's always going to be little Papa Pump to me. Pete Williams. And then later, Lashley is chastised for accidentally killing Pete Williams. Even though, even though it is acknowledged it was an accident and he didn't mean to do it, they still are mad at him. And he's like, why? I didn't do anything wrong. So he's been warned, don't have an accident again or else. But, but Seth Rollins, who instigated all of that, nothing happened to him. Nobody talked to him. Nobody told him about any, any accidents. I think Bobby Lashley might have a case here. Lenny wants me to tell him again how this is so much different than when Vince was, bro, go back six months and watch the show and get back to me. You won't make it through the three hours. It's 50 times dumber. It doesn't mean that there aren't dumb things on this show. Nobody said that it used to be dumb and now it's dumb at all. It's not dumb at all. It used to be every segment was stupid and lame, and now it's not. There are still stupid things that happen, but you know what? On Impact, a guy got stabbed in the heart and killed. That's stupid. Okay? On Rampage, Keith Lee trusts Swerve. That's stupid. I watch New Japan and Evil and, and the Bullet Club destroy every match and the ref just stands there. That's stupid. There's stupid stuff that happens everywhere. It used to be way more stupid. Now it's much less stupid. Poker tournament. Set up some matches. Austin Theory versus Ali. So the story here is that Ali keeps complaining which is true. Austin Theory says, you complain too much, which is true. He tells him, I'll give you a title shot tonight, but if you lose, I don't ever want to hear you say the word opportunity again. You're done. So they do the match. Of course, Theory's killing the guy. And then Ziggler shows up, and he attacks Theory for the disqualification, which means Ali has lost via DQ. And that means he can't say opportunity again, thank God. And so, of course, Ali is mad at Ziggler, Ziggler's like, dude, I don't care about you. I'm getting my revenge on this idiot. And they get into a big argument, and uh, and Austin Theory ends up laying both of them out. Well, that's not a great way, but it is one way to get to what's probably going to be a pretty cool three-way match. And then we had uh, AJ, Carl Anderson, and Luke Gallows versus the Alpha Academy and Baron Corbin. It was a good match. But uh, we see these on every every show now. We got a six man match. It's got to go fifteen minutes. Get the heat on one guy, he gets a tag. Get the heat on the other guy, he gets a tag. Everybody gets a big move, you get a finish. I don't got anything wrong with it, but you know when you do the same basic thing on every show, you are going to have a turnoff factor because that's just what people do when they watch wrestling. And uh, they hit the magic killer on. Of course, poor Chad Gable is the most talented guy maybe in the match, and they pinned him, and it was fun. They, they really don't use Otis's Midwestern self enough. They really don't. Him saying sausages and being back there talking about uh, all that stuff, and, and they really need to use He was the only to... funny thing about the poker. They have got to bring back shakes thing. and weights, Otis. Please bring that back What somehow. What was the line that he had? 
Was it Shakes and Weights? No. Well, he besides was, Oh Mandy? No, he, oh Mandy. No, you idiot. Last night. Oh, they were in the night? poker tournament, and somebody had said something about... Uh, it, uh, it was some poker tournament. He thought they were talking about food. Yes. <laughs> How do they taste? That was... Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's what it was. What was this, everybody? That was funny. That was actually funny. Otis being big and fat and loving food, he's the American super porky, but he's underutilized. And we had Dominic versus Akir Tozawa, three minutes. This was set up in the poker game. Akir Tozawa does not like cheaters, and Dominic tried to cheat. So Tozawa challenged him to a match. The finish, this poor Tozawa. He jumped 500 feet in the air off that top rope for the giant back senton. And Dominic moved, and he fell from, like, 500 feet up in the air, and he crashed. And they immediately cut to a shot of Rhea, and she's laughing at this guy. I was like, oh, this poor guy. And then he got frog splashed and pinned. I did like it because Dominic goes up to the top, and Corey goes, watch this shimmy. The women go wild. And then he didn't do a shimmy. Just did a frog splash. <laughs> I did like Dom uh, putting himself, you know, if you got a problem with uh, me, you got a problem with the whole Judgment Day. You can see where that's going to lead one day. Roger says this is lazy comedy. Look at the big fat guy who loves food. <laughs> Have you seen their alternate comedy? Big fat guy who likes food is the only good comedy yeah. they've got. Look, John Panette, and there's been plenty. Ralphie May, if you're funny with the jokes about the food, then great. If you're not, then you're not. Bastion Booker, great example. And then the main event was Alexa Bliss, Nikki, and Becky. And uh, it was hit or miss. They had some stuff that was way off. They had some stuff that was good. Uh, in the end, uh, they built up Becky and Bailey in that opening segment. I guess just as, you know, to swerve you. Because Alexa Bliss got the win with Twisted Bliss on Nikki Cross. This was after Dakota and EO had beaten up Becky. And so next week, it is Alexa versus Bailey, and the winner gets Bianca. And we'll see what happens. We'll see how fast they pull this trigger on the Alexa Bliss heel turn. Can I bring you a scenario? Sure. We Eric Young's been stabbed in the heart. He's on his way back to WWE, apparently reincarnated. We've seen Nikki Cross walk away in a daze and drop the title belt. I know people are focused on Alexa and Bray, but could we see Bo Dallas, Eric Young, maybe bring back Killian Dane and have Alexa and Nikki all together in a stable, or is that too much to handle? I'm telling you. Actually, I'm not telling you because I don't know what they're going to do. But what I think they're going to do is Bray and old Uncle Howdy are going to have human representations of all of the puppets. So there's going to be some, it should be Otis, actually. The guy we gotta have a, a huskus. We gotta have the buzzard. We gotta have uh what's her name? The uh The Witch. The Witch. Or the uh what the yeah. hell was it? What was her name, everybody? You know, Who's funny? the poor guy who kept getting killed? That would be Eric Young. He would be the rabbit, wouldn't he? He, he could be a rambling rabbit, yeah. Rambling no. rabbit was the guy that was killed all the time and always came back to life. So that would be Eric Young. He just got killed. Now he's on yeah. the show. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Sister Abigail. Sister Abigail. Yeah, so I think we're gonna have he's gonna have a stable. Of six human puppets, all in creepy masks, that go around and, and wrestle. I'm not saying it's going to be any good, but I think that's where we might be going here. The hey. WWE legendary hey, joke, joke book. book. Why do WWE superstars' fingers hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Why Grin. were Gene Erkerlund's pants always so angry Erkerland? <laughs> where does beth phoenix shop online amazon the glamazon oh, yeah. yep no no I mean, no. <laughs> no that is the answer glamazon that's what i said <laughs> what? No, you said gramazon no i said uh, glamazon <laughs> oh, there should be a gramazon <laughs> yeah gramazon actually you get, like, puppy you get it to you real slow if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.